chills all see this place Drowning in the monotone, no escape today But I need a hip come break the static's hold Losing of this time, it bites the story is told Say goodbye to boredom, headlines made of gold Twist and shake perspectives in a way so bold They serve it up a humor with a snarky twist Little bites and moves to fill your daily list Hey guys, it's Mo on the 2nd of September and I've got AM Newsy News Nuggets for you. And the first story is terrifying. How a leading change of psychiatric hospital traps patients. Remind me not to accept an invitation from any mental health, you know, hospitals, like for a free visit, call. Anywho, let's get into this. Acadia Healthcare is one of America's largest chains of psychiatric hospitals. Since the panorama exacerbated a mental health crisis already run amok, the company's revenue has soared. Stick with people with mental health. It's a never-ending business. And its stock price has more than doubled. But a New York Times investigation found that some of the success was built on a disturbing practice. Acadia has lured patients into its facilities and held them against their will, even when detaining them was not medically necessary. In at least 12 of 19 states where Acadia operates psychiatric hospitals, Dozens of patients, employees, and police officers have alerted authorities that the company was detaining people in ways that violated the law, according to records reviewed by the Times. In some cases, judges have intervened to force Acadia to release patients. Some patients arrived at emergency rooms seeking routine mental health care only to find themselves sent to Acadia facilities and locked in. A social worker spent six days inside an Acadia hospital in Florida after she tried to get her bipolar medications adjusted. A woman who works at a children's hospital was held for seven days after she showed up at an Acadia facility in Indiana looking for therapy. And after police officers raided an Acadia hospital in Georgia, 16 patients told investigators that they had been kept here with no excuses or valid reason, according to a police report. Acadia held them all under laws meant for people who pose an imminent risk to themselves or others, but none of the patients appear to have met that legal standard according to records and interviews. I think I will shoot this story over to Megan Fox to see if she's seen it um, because she is one of the really good investigative journalists who may be able to get more information about this. I will see if I can pull up some of the records. I have so many videos to make and I really need to get myself on a schedule uh, working on videos and creating content on um, chaos, demon, you know, semi-chaotic, neutral, goodish uh, time period of inspirations does not seem to be working. So I definitely need to treat this like a real job and get a, a schedule. Any who's all back. Um, <clears throat> now, most doctors agree that people in the throes of a psychological crisis must be sometimes detained against their will to stabilize them and prevent harm. These can be tough calls balancing a patient's safety with their civil rights. But at Acadia, patients were often held for financial reasons rather than medical ones, according to more than 50 current and former executives and staff members. Acadia, which charges $2,200 a day for some patients, at times deploys an array of strategies to pursue insurance or persuade insurers to cover longer stays, employees said. Acadia has exaggerated patient symptoms. It has tweaked medication doses dosages then claimed that patients needed to stay longer because of that adjustment. And it has argued that patients are not well enough to leave because they did not finish a meal. Unless the patient or their family hires lawyers, Acadia often holds them until their insurance runs out. We are keeping people who didn't need to be there, said Lexi Reed, a psychiatric nurse who worked at an Acadia facility in Florida from 2001 to 2020. Or 2021 to 2022. 
Every day spent in a psychiatric hospital can be a trial. At Acadia facilities throughout the country, health inspectors have found some patients did not receive therapy, were unsupervised, or denied access to vital medications. Many inspectors report described grapes, assaults, and filthy conditions. Tim Blair, an Acadia spokesperson, would not comment on individual patients citing privacy law. He said that the patient examples cited by the Times were not representative of many patients with positive experiences. Well, yes, those who reported a positive experience would not be one of those that you held against their will unless they had to avoid like a family gathering. I don't know. And he said, still, to be clear, any indication that falls short, uh, that we're falling short of our rigorous standards is unacceptable and actions will be taken to address it, Blair said, adding that quality care and medical necessity drives every patient-related decision at Acadia. Acadia is at the forefront of a shift in how Americans receive mental health care. Psychiatric hospitals were once run by the government or nonprofit groups, but both have been retreating from psychiatric care. Today, for profit companies are playing a bigger role. Uh, lured by the Affordable Care Act's requirement that covers and or that makes people that are insurers cover mental health. Acadia operates more than five or 50 psychiatric hospitals nationwide, and the bulk of its revenue comes from government insurance programs. More than 20 nonprofit health systems, including Henry Ford in Michigan, uh, Geisinger in Pennsylvania, have teamed up with Acadia to open facilities. The success has attracted notice on Wall Street with stock prices so soaring, Acadia is valued at just about $7 billion. Its CEO, Christopher H. Hunter, was paid more than $7 million last year. Now, since Hunter was appointed in 2022, <clears throat> Blair said that the company has improved the quality of its care and training of its employees to support enhanced patient safety. Federal and state authorities have periodically cracked down on Acadia, as well as its main rival, Universal Health Services. In 2020, UHS agreed to pay $122 million to settle a Department of Justice investigation into whether the company billed for unnecessary patient stays. Now, UHS continues to deny, wrong deny wrongdoing, but they sure are paying, so make of that what you will. This year, Acadia said it tentatively agreed to settle a similar Justice Department investigation into, among many other things, whether patient stays were medical, medically necessary. Acadia was founded in 2005 by Ree B. Wad, a financier, and grew slowly at first, but in 2011, the company went public and embarked on a major expansion. The timing was ideal. Over the next several years, Acadia got a lift from Obamacare, which requires insurers to cover mental health. Today, Acadia has 54 inpatient psychiatric hospitals with a total of 5,900 beds. It fills those beds in a variety of ways. Acadia markets directly to potential customers, encouraging them to skip the ER. The company cultivates relationships with people like police officers and emergency responders in hopes that they will bring patients to Acadia. Professionals in these industries often do not have a deep expertise in behavioral health, so developing these partnerships allow them to better serve the individuals in need, Blair said. Acadia also pitches itself to staff in hospital emergency rooms that have been inundated with patients seeking mental health care. Business development teams make sales calls to doctors and other hospital workers, passing out brochures and talking up the expertise of Acadia's staff and its willingness to take difficult patients. Sometimes they come bearing donuts. In a few states, Acadia has dispatched teams to overwhelm ERs to help them determine or to 
has dispatched teams to overwhelmed ERs to help them determine whether patients need to be hospitalized. These employees, known as assessors, are supposed to be objective, but several said that Acadia scolded them when they suggested that patients be sent to other psych psychiatric hospitals. Valerie McGinnis, who worked as an assessor for Acadia until 2019, said that there was consistent pressure to send patients to Acadia facilities. We get emails and calls and text berating us, she said, adding, it made me feel really gross because Acadia hospitals were not always the best ones for the patients. A colleague, Gwyneth Shanks, agreed, saying it was deeply unethical. Ladisha Haynes, a former human resources director at Lakewood Behavioral Health Hospital in Acadia facility in Georgia, said that when the hospital had empty beds, the assessors were always being pressured and told to beat the bushes, she said. Their judgment was clouded. Blair said the use of assessors in emergency rooms was a standard uh, industry practice. He said ER doctors, not assessors, were the ones who decided whether patients would be hospitalized. The time also, Times also identified eight instances of Acadia holding people who had voluntarily checked themselves in, but then changed their minds. One of these patients was a hospital worker in Indiana who asked for anonymity because she didn't want her health issues to be made public. She sought treatment at an Acadia hospital in Indianapolis, but was then held against her will when she asked to leave, according to a complaint filed with the state's attorney general. She was released after her father went to court. Another retired city employee who asked the Times not to identify her um, other than her initials, in March 2021, said she was feeling depressed and went to her doctor's office to get in a therapist recommendation. A nurse there provided her several options, including Park Royale in Flor Florida, um, Fort Myers, and Acadia Hospital, <coughs> excuse me, near her home. She said an employee at Park Royale told her that in order to get therapy, she would have to sign herself in. She arranged for her husband to pick her up that evening from the hospital. But when TB tried to leave, Park Royale refused to let her out. Uh, it let her out six days later after her husband went to court and a judge ordered her to be released. Once Acadia gets their patients in the door, it often tries to hold them until their insurance runs out. Acadia goes to great lengths to convince insurers that the patient should stay as long as possible, often around five days. To do that, Acadia needs to show their patients are unstable and require ongoing intensive care. Former Acadia executives and staff in 10 states said employees were coached to use certain buzzwords like combative inpatient charts to make that case. In 2022, for example, state inspectors criticized an Acadia hospital in Reading, Pennsylvania, for having instructed workers to avoid adjectives like calm and compliant in the patient's charts. The same year, employees at Acadia hospitals in Ohio and Michigan complained to their state regulators that doctors had written false statements in medical charts to justify continuing stays. At an Acadia hospital in Missouri, three former nurses said executives pressured them to label patients whose insurance was about to run out as uncooperative. Acadia employees would then argue to insurance companies that the patients weren't ready to leave. Sometimes the nurses said they wrote patients up for not finishing a meal or skipping group therapy. Once Acadia won more insurance stays for the patients, it would often not release them before their insurance ran out. According to dozens of former Acadia executives, psychiatrists, and other staff members, if there were any insurance stays left, that patient was going to be held, said Jesse Roder, who was a top executive at two Acadia hospitals in Florida in 2018 and 19. Under state laws, patients generally must post an imminent threat to themselves or others in order to be held against their will in a psychiatric facility. Even then, hospitals cannot hold people for more than a handful of days unless the patients agree to stay longer or a judge or medical professional determines that they are not safe to leave. <coughs> In Florida, the limit of holding patients against their will is 72 hours. To extend that time, hospitals have to get court approval. 
Acadia's North Tampa Behavioral Health Hospital found a way to exploit that, current and former employees said. From 2019 to 2023, North Tampa filled more than or filed more than 4,500 petitions to extend patients' voluntary stays, according to a Times analyst, um, and looking at court records. Simply filing a petition allowed the hospital to legally hold the patients and, their, and bill their insurance until the court day, which can be several days after the petition is filed. Blair said this was often necessary to provide enough care to stabilize patients. The judge granted only 54 of North Tampa's petition, or about 1% of the total. Catherine McKenzie, a school social worker, had recently moved to Tampa and didn't yet have a local psychiatrist. In, 2000, or in 2020, August, she visited an emergency room to have her prescriptions for bipolar uh, disorder evaluated, and an EDAR doctor sent her to North Tampa Behavioral. Once there, Mackenzie was admitted and held against her will, even though her medical records stated she was not feeling self deleted or any or wanting to hurt others. From the moment she entered the facility, Mackenzie begged to be released, according to court records and her mother, Jane Robertson. Please, con God, connect me back uh, to my mom ASAP. Mackenzie wrote in a journal that she kept during her hospitalization and the Times reviewed. Every time the locked door would open and slam, a, I would feel a quick feeling of fear. Instead of releasing her, the hospital went to court seeking to extend her stay. While she was waiting for a hearing, Acadia charged her insurance about $2,200 a day, billing records show. Shortly before the hearing, Acadia agreed to release her. Acadia charged her insurance $13,200 for the six-day stay. Robertson said her daughter has become terrified of seeking help because she fears she could find herself trapped back inside. Mackenzie later sued Acadia and received a reached a confidential agreement with them. Settlement, I'm sure. I'm sure this is all happening. This is terrifying. And I guess, you know, government or private business, people are going to do each other dirty. Involuntary stays have lasting effects on other patients, too. One woman in Michigan said in an interview that she lost her job while detained. A man in Utah said he'd become afraid to seek help since being held at a Acadia facility for a week in 2021. In December 2019, more than 50 police officers descended on Acadia Psychiatric Hospital in an office park 30 minutes north of Atlanta. Police had opened an investigation into the hospital, Lakewood Behavioral Health, after numerous incidents, according to police records. The previous January, a boy stating or staying at Lakewood was taken to a nearby emergency room. He had so many bruises that staff suspended or suspected child endangerment. A few months later, police officers witnessed three Lakeview employees assaulting a patient. Over the next six months, they interviewed dozens of patients who said they had been held against their will or had uh, seen patients, including children, being assaulted or neglected. Health inspectors nationwide have faulted Acadia for similar problems, including failure to provide adequate medical care and neglecting patients. Acadia closed its Highland Ridge Hospital in Utah this year after state regulators investigated reports of dozens of grapes and assaults. In 2022, or Tennessee inspectors faulted Acadia for falsely claiming in medical charts that a patient in Memphis, Tennessee, had been checked on every 15 minutes. He was found in rigor mortis hours after he died. Way to go. Lake the Lakeview raid did not lead to any charges. About a year after the raid, Kim Lupton, a wealthy widow who lived on the shore of Lake Ong. Anaki in Georgia arrived at an emergency room of Piedmont Athens Regional Medical Center. Hours earlier, she said she had become, become convinced that someone was trying to poison her. She swam across a narrow inlet into the yard of a neighbor who called the ambu or an ambulance. Doctors at Piedmont determined that Lupton was delusional, but not self-delete, you know, wanting to take herself away 
or threaten a threat to others, according to her medical records. But over the next few hours, still at Piedmont, she was seen by assessors employed at Acadia. They recommended that Lupton uh, be sent to the psychiatric hospital, her records show. Lupton said she wanted to go home. Instead, shortly after 11 p.m., she was taken to a van and driven more than an hour to Acadia's Lakeview facility. Once there, Lupton was lucid and repeatedly asked to leave, according to her medical records. One of Lupton's friends called a private investigator, Doug McDonald, who eventually showed up at Lakewood with a letter or Lakeview with a letter from a lawyer. The letter said Lupton had not been evaluated by a psychiatrist at Lakeview in violation of Georgia law. Lakeview summoned a psychiatrist who agreed to release her according to a lawsuit Lupton filed against Acadia. She had been there for four days. McDonald said that while he was waiting to pick Lupton up in the parking lot, another woman approached him. Her teenage daughter was stuck inside too. Just absolutely horrifying. And I think that's going to be the only story I'm going to change this from AM News Nuggets to something terrifying medically. But this is terrifying. Let's get this out there. You shouldn't, if we want to make mental health a big non-stigma, then maybe we should take care of those people, be compassionate, and actually take care of them. The only thing that giving them mental health insurance seems to have done is to have bred an entire new class of victims for, for these hospitals to abuse. Wonderful. Well, it's not a happy note, but this needs to get out there. I'm going to put important medical, you know, shenanigans afoot. Anywho, I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for joining. Please, I, I don't ask this much, but share this video around. Let's get some light on this. And I mean, I'm sure the New York Times will do their part too, but let's do it around, you know, the regular internet as well. Bye guys.